This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, I'm going to take a look at doing some basic rigging. Now, rigging is the art of adding controls to animate an object. You can rig anything from a character to a car. And adding these controls makes animating the object a lot easier. Now, a rigged object can be simple or it can be incredibly complex with a lot of automated features. For this example, we're going to create just a basic rig for our crow and look at adding some simple handles. Again, the purpose of this is to make the animation process go a lot smoother. We'll start by first altering the control handle that we've already added to the crow's head. Currently, we have the control handle connected through a constraint to the crow's head joint, and this control handle is operating the rotation of that joint. We want to add some extra control in there so that we can move the head more freely and also in more directions than it currently is going and give us some greater flexibility to animating this character. I'll delete the constraint that's currently on there so that we can start clean. I'll select the joint, go in the outliner, and expand my hierarchy until I can see the head point constraint which is a constraint on my handle itself to keep the handle locked to the joint when it moves. We don't need that anymore. Let's get rid of it. And we'll expand the joint hierarchy and delete the orient constraint to the joint itself. And now it's free of any control. And I'm gonna change the orientation of this circle. I'll rotate that up. 90 degrees, and I'm going to snap it to the top joint instead of at the neck, and we can actually move this anywhere we want. I'll slide it a little bit forward there and a little down, just so that it's centered with the head and makes more sense to us visually. Now I'll create an IK handle. And so you can see the tool options here. We're using an IK single chain solver. And we're using this because we just need simple control. It is a single chain, just makes sense. We don't have any extra joints in there, so we don't need a rotate plane handle solver. So I have that handle there, and I'll make that handle a child of my head control. And I wanna make sure that I freeze those transforms prior to doing this, just so that I have a value of zero in there. So when I animate, I'm always starting from nothing. And that's exactly where we want to be. So we'll freeze those transforms, select my IK handle, and then I'll hold shift, select my control handle, and choose P on the keyboard to parent that up. Now when I move that control handle, you can see now we get this side-to-side -side motion, and we can move the head back and forward to get a much greater range of motion. And of course, we also have the ability to rotate that handle. Let's move on. Let's add another control handle to the root, and this will be to the root of my skeleton. So I'm going to create a NURBS primitive circle. We'll give it some scale again, just so that we can see it. And let's snap it to the root. We'll scale that to an appropriate size there. And we'll freeze those transforms and delete any history off of there. Again, starting from a clean object. Let's also rename it. I'll rename it to body. And I'm going to select the handle and hold shift and select the skeleton root and that because it's the root it will highlight the entire hierarchy and we'll use a parent constraint to connect these two let's open those tool options 
And to be safe, we'll use the maintain offset. That way it will not flip out on us with bad rotation values getting connected. And we'll use translate and our rotate. And let's add that. And with the parent constraint, it allows us to do multiple motion. So we have our rotate values as well as translation gives us a great range of motion. Now you can also see there where we connected the head. Since the handle is not in this hierarchy or not a child of my other handle, it does not move with this handle. And we'll take a look at how to fix that or to make that work more in our favor. Let's add another handle. We'll add that to the center for the upper body. And once again, freeze and delete history. I'll shift select the joint I want to connect. And we'll parent constrain that using the same exact attributes or settings that we used for the body handle. And let's call this upper body. Let's take a look at the feet. You can see that I've already added a lot of extra stuff here. And what I've done is simply added the SC solver IK handles to all of the toes, with the exception of one last one that I'll demonstrate. And then I added primitive circles just for those control handles and took the IK handle and made it a child of the circle. And I've done that for each toe and also for the middle joint inside of here that acts as the foot. And I'll show how this works. So I have my handle, and that's just moving the toe IK handle, and the IK handle being a child of that nerve's circle. And then there's one here in the center that moves the foot. So how this was set up was I chose my IK SC handle, selected those joints that created my handle, and then I can just grab a circle from an adjacent toe, and I'll do Control D to duplicate that circle, and then snap it to the center of the joint. Select my IK handle, hold Shift, and select the nerve's circle, and press P to make the parent-child relationship. I'll repeat this one more time. For the foot, choose the ankle for the root, and then we'll go out and choose the base of the middle toe. And we'll just move that, and you can see that that moves the foot. And since I already have this circle over here scaled, I'll duplicate it, and bring that over and snap that to a joint to get my proper position. And we'll freeze the transforms. I also needed to freeze the transforms here, I did not. And I'll just go ahead and do that. Now that rotated that IK handle, but that's not going to alter its functionality. So that's still okay. That's not clean, but that's okay. We could have just as easily unparented the IK handle, froze the transform on the nerve circle, and then just parented it back up. So let's take the IK handle and we'll make that a child of the circle. And I would go through and rename all of those so that we have decent identification there. And to clean this up, I'll grab all of these IK handles and hide them. We no longer need to see them. And I can use the channel box just to alter the visibility here, I could just type in zero, or we could have chosen control H on the keyboard to hide those. I think I still got one more sitting there. Let's do control H and just hide that. And same thing over there. Now with the IK handles on the feet and the toes, this enables those parts to stay fixed. So now when I move my body and we're shearing the body there, but when I move the body, you can see that they try to stay planted to the ground. Okay? Even when I pull away, those feet 
angle back towards their original positions. Now I also have a large circle at the base and I've already parented the root of the skeleton to there, but now I want to add all these control handles to that circle so that they follow along and that our entire character will move with this base circle down at the bottom and this will act as the root of our character. It's kind of difficult to get to all of the circles that we have in place for the feet, so I'm going to add some layers so that we can hide our geometry. And this layer here, we'll just call this mesh. Especially if we're going to add this to another scene, then that helps keep things organized. You can quickly identify that. And I'll select this skeleton, and we can just add that as well and hide it. And we'll just grab all of those circles and make them a child of that root. Let's turn our layers back on and I'll select that and now I can move the crow freely throughout my scene. Now depending on the type of control we're after, we can play with the other handles here and make them children of the other handles lower in our hierarchy. So for instance, if I move my body or rotate the body and I want the head to follow, we can just take that and make it a child. And that way it will come along for the ride. Now for the most part you can see that we do not want to translate these handles here. A little bit of translation will be okay, but too much of course is going to shear the model. These are really much better off just rotating. That concludes our movie on basic rigging.